Do you want to start a rant on the Sabres, or do you want me I mean, to go on? Because the Sabres are 0-3. They have three goals for. They're expected goals for. I, I'm an analytics guy. I know you don't want to hear this. Sabres fans don't want to hear this. Their expected goals for is 6.57, and they're, they're negative 3.57 goals below expected, which means they're getting unlucky. They're getting goalied. But – you have to find a way just to get through it. Get through it. Like, well, Lindy I get... Ruff had a great quote the other night. He said, look, I know we, we can't score right now. So it's either we're going to figure it out or every goal we play is going to the All-Star game. <laughs> Dude's a fucking beauty I mean, that, that. that's a great quote. I mean, and he ain't wrong because you know, I was at the game on, on Thursday. It was the season opener. They, they should have won that game. They dominated the Kings for 90% of the game. They get into penalty trouble at the end. The officiating wasn't the greatest. But Samuelson took a really stupid – they were already shorthanded, less than three minutes to go in the game. Samuelson takes a really stupid slashing penalty where he breaks the dude's stick in half. Like, they're always going to call that. Did what are he, you doing? Did he end up, like, two-handing him? It wasn't like, like, a, I, like chop, a chop. But, but like, like, he got his stick, and it broke it clean in half. And, like, they're going to call that ten times out of yeah. ten. Like, that's textbook slashing. The stick breaks or hands going up right away. Yeah. Like, if it would have been a lighter tap, they probably don't call that, but you break it in half. Right. You, you're hitting their stick hard enough to break it in half, yet yeah, they're going to call that. They go on a five on three. The Kings score to take the lead. And that was pretty much all she wrote for the game. The, the arena felt, after that, it felt, literally felt like somebody died in the arena. Not many people were talking. You know, me and Chris on our drive home after the game didn't say a damn thing. Well, to it each was other. brutal. I, I, was, I was at work, so I wasn't able to watch most of the game. But I put on a couple bets, and I can't believe my anytime goal scorer on Alex Tuck hit. That was beautiful. Um, but I thought the Kings were going to – now, I know we always play the Kings tough, but I had Dylan Cousins' two-plus shots hit. I had Lucan in 22-plus saves hit in, like, the second period. No, sorry. No, no, no. Darcy Kemper saves. Kemper? 20, I mean, Kemper had a great game. He had 22-plus saves. I That hit – Lucan in 27 plus saves didn't hit. I thought the Kings were going to play better. And Anze Kopitar, Kopitar had a Hattie, that a dude, Natty that Hattie. That's amazing. 37 years old, putting up a Natty Hattie in his first game of the season. Great for him. The Sabres should have won. They, they, they should have won. They, nine times out of ten, they win that game. And there were, were there two instances or just one instance where the buzzer beat the goal? Was it just the Benson one or was there a second one too? This is the first just, one. Just the Benson one? Yeah. Benson missed the goal by literally one-tenth of a second. Yep. One-tenth of a second. The Sabres hit a couple posts. Um, Alex I mean, Tuck's... Uh, Ryan McLeod had a break, uh, penalty shot. It completely fucked up on the move, but... I, that was that was a good idea. Poor execution on it. I mean... I mean, I, if I were him, I would, he's so fast. Just... Just go in there. It's turbo mode. <laughs> Pull on, put on the brakes the last second and then freeze the goalie. Right. I don't know if he's if he has Off good topic enough here, hands. But that just reminded me. One of my favorite shootout moves of all time was when Patrick Kane was just going like slow as hell. Just going crazy. And the goalie's like, what the fuck do I do? And he just shoots it. He's done that right a in. bunch of times. And the one that I remember is the one against the Minnesota Wild where he does about 25 stick handles in like 10 seconds. Not, no, it can't be 10 seconds, but like five seconds. And then absolutely gets the goalie going one way, and he just slams the puck in the middle of the neck going the other way. Okay, back to the Sabres, <laughs> though. Like, get, like what Lindy Ruff said, like, we're going fi- to we're, we're score, like – He's right. I mean, if they keep playing like this, they should score more. Not every goalie is going to have a career game against them, hopefully. Well, we're going to have to face Jake Allen again, probably. So, Yeah, but... Uh, uh, although I, I don't I, even know what to say about this At least anymore. we don't get Sergei Bobrovsky tonight. Although, Spencer Knight seems... It doesn't to- fucking matter. <laughs> it's just... I, I, I don't even know what to say about this team anymore. It's been so long since they've been pretty uncompetitive in the mm-hmm. league they're zero and three i know it's a long season but you're already in a hole you got to win three straight to get back to 500 you know they're playing the defending stanley cup champions tonight well no tomorrow like when you guys are listening if they're zero and four which you could probably laugh at probably us more 85 percent that they're on for tomorrow yeah like chris uh sent us a message like barkov's out tonight and so chuck's not playing i was like oh great the sabers are going to lose four to two tonight <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's that's how Buffalo fans are now. Like you, like after the first game, fans were freaking out. It's because just you're told something by the management and by the ownership, and then the other, the exact opposite happens. It's like okay, it's this- not even that for me anymore. It's just we've been bad for so long. You know, I'm very passionate about them. You know, I've season tickets, watching them probably too much the last few years. 
you know, I watched a lot of games with that Eichel, and it was really frustrating because you could see the talent on the team. You know, for long, oh, coaching's holding us back. Okay, Don Granado, we missed the playoffs by a point. It's like, okay, we're back. We're going to be a playoff team. They take another step back. They bring back Lindy Ruff, which felt to me like a move to get people in the seats. You know, I love Lindy. He was a great coach for the Sabres for a long time. I don't know if he has it still. Mm -hmm. You know, with what happened in New Jersey last year, there was a lot of factors that went into them not being great. The old goaltending, a lot of injuries, but still. Oh, Speaking of that, somebody brought up in one of our comment sections on YouTube about the Devils and Lindy Ruff and everything, and Andrew Burnett was in on Lindy Ruff's staff in twenty two twenty three. Yeah. He I think leaves. I might have saw that comment. Yeah, yeah, he leaves, go to Nashville, and Lindy Ruff shits the bed, and the Devils shit the bed. Coincidence? It might not be. I mean, Burnett's but a great I'm just coach. Saying, I mean, I, I'm he, just saying he, it could he, be. If Tockett didn't completely turn the Devil and um, then the Canucks around last year, I think Tockett. I mean, I, I can't. I can't <laughs> Burnett, talk. And Burnett probably wins Coach of the Year last year. Yeah, with yeah. what he did with Nashville, because they did not. Nobody thought they were going to be that. They good were supposed last year. to be like an eighty two point team. Yeah, and like not. A playoff team. I mean, that that run they had last year, like oh, after like, that Vegas trip, was insane. That was disgusting. Um, but back on topic with the Sabres, yeah, I don't really have too much more to add on the Sabres except I'm just at this point, I'm just being, I'm done being patient. I, I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm just like defeated at this point. Like I don't even know what to say. Like, like now, I'm I mean I remember when everybody was calling us like pessimistic about the Sabers after the uh, after like all of, like the off season stuff and everything, and now we're on three. Now I'm not gonna panic yet because we're on three. Actually, I'm gonna ask you this: was on a scale of zero to ten, how much are you panicking right now? Or does I don't know. I I, I I'm more. I'm not really panicking. I'm just angry. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm I'm upset. You know that song by Drake? I'm upset. Yeah, it's playing right now. Background, <laughs> but you know, I can't really pan. I, I I don't think panic's a good word to describe how I feel like at all. Because does it almost feel like empty? Like you have yes, no hope. I, I like no like, hope. Like w w w I, I don't even know what to say anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I get I tried to get excited every year, and they let me down every year. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm not even allowed to you know be excited about going to games. It's like you go to a game, you're like, okay, I get to see NHL hockey in person. It's like, oh, here's a four to one loss, right? It's, I mean, I it mean, sucks. It's, the, it's the same. They haven't been good since I was like twelve years old, yeah. thirteen years old. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just tired, man. Yeah, I'm tired. No, I, I get and it. And I'm sick of all these non Sabres fans. Like, I don't get like, I like poor Sabres fans. But don't worry, you guys have a bright future. You have a lot I of feel problems. bad for We've Sabres fans. We've been saying fans. that for fucking years, like. I know we have good prospects. I know we have good players in the team now, but I want to win now. Yeah. Like I, I, I don't, I don't care anymore. We don't want to wait another two years. I, I don't want to, you know. Oh, next year they're gonna be, they'll be better. Oh, just wait till you know this prospect's ready to go. You know. Oh, we got Costa Hellenius. He's gonna be a great <laughs> NHLer in a few years. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Like I, I'm sick of this, man. Like I feel like I care more about winning than this organization does. I mean, I'm sure we all do too. Because I mean, I I don't know if Ter if Terry Gould didn't buy the Sabers. I don't know if Buffalo even has a hockey team still, and it does feel like they are trying to upgrade the arena and, and put some more and uh, make it a better game day experience. But if the on ice product is still shit, it doesn't matter. Listen, a new roof is how the Sabers win. I will make that <laughs> meme until the day they make the playoffs. Like, <laughs> yeah, you might be you might be in your forties by the time that happens. <laughs> I mean, it's nothing I'm not – I mean, with the Bills, like, I didn't even know what the playoffs were in Buffalo for mm -hmm. the Bills until I was freaking 18 years old. Yeah. Like, so it, it has to end eventually, right? It sucks because I look at my favorite sports teams. I'm a Bills fan. They're good, but they can't get over the hump. Sabres fans haven't been to the playoffs since 2011. I'm 23 if right now. If you would have told me when I was, like, eight or nine years old, that I would have been to a Bills playoff game before I went to a Sabres playoff game, I would have said, called you crazy. You're crazy because they were at the Bills were a complete ass, and the Sabres were playoff teams almost every year. I will say it feels worse though because I'm a Mariners fan. They've made the playoffs once in my 23 year of existence, <laughs> so I'm a Sabres fan and I have to deal with the Mariners. Come on, Sabres, pick it up, dude. Fuck. But at this point, like I just feel like I'm being punished for something. Like I mean, I mean, it could be worse. It could be Arizona. I, I don't know. At least they don't have anything to get angry about anymore. That is true. I mean, now Utah is looking great, but then Terry, I feel like just Terry Pergula just doesn't care. I mean, 
And I will say, if, if I'm him, I feel it's like pretty simple. When the team does better, you do better because fans are excited. They're buying more. You're selling out more games. People are buying more jerseys, more merchandise. You make more money. Come on, like yesterday's game, Thursday's game was a sold out crowd. You're t- and the team sucks. The team sucks, and it was sold out. I mean, but the, the, they were play outplayed. The, that's the that's the worst part is they outplayed the Kings the, almost the whole game. The crowd is really into it, and I I I'm not joking. When the Kings scored that second goal to take the lead, it literally like half the arena got up. You could hear a pin drop, but like it felt like like every nobody was even talking. It was like they just felt like we were defeated. Mm-hmm. Like it was like what the fuck do we do? Like we're zero and three. Like is this ever gonna end? Yeah, and now here we are. Play the Panthers. We're in must win territory for the Sabres. Yeah, it's game four of the year and like it's it's stupid. It's it's because we have no trust in the team anymore. Like if you're if you last season take another step, either make the playoffs, get swept, or you're still a point out, it's like you start 0 4, you have trust in the team. You don't have trust because last season you took a step back. Well, last year was probably the most excited I've been for a Sabres mm-hmm. season in a long time. Yep. You know, we missed the playoffs by one point. Brought most everybody back. You know, Tage was looking like a superstar. You know, Darlene took that next step. Like, it looked like we were, and we had Devin Levi, you know, who was great down the stretch for his first year in the league. And then they shit the bed last year. They were worse. I mean, I, we weren't the only ones saying that. Like, everyone was saying that the Sabres should make the playoffs last yes, year. Yes, we had the Sabres in top three in the Atlantic. I didn't. Sorry, I had them as I a wild card okay. team. I was, that I was had a them little, second. You, you, that was a little crazy. Me and Chris had them in second, I will say. I mean, I was also crazy. I, I think I had the Panthers not even making the playoffs. That's or true. Something. And now I don't, I don't, neither of us have the Sabres making the playoffs this year, right? No, I don't yeah, think they're yeah, a playoff I team. No, I mean, they're, they're 0 3 already. Right. I mean, I would say, like, you know, teams in that wild card conversation are, are better than them. You know, Islanders. Better. Detroit's better than them. Better. Ottawa looks better than them. Better. I don't know about Pittsburgh. I need to see them play more. They got the shit beat out of them. There I will game. say Joel Bloomquist looks good, though. Yeah. Looks really good. He played great against Detroit. I mean, Jari ain't that good. Jari's not, no. I mean, I, I, I know they Bloom- played the Rangers the first game of the year, and they, they got their ass beat, and the Rangers are good, but they Bloom- still got their ass beat. Bloomquist might take Jari's job by the end of the year, I think. Yeah, Jari's contract looking worse and worse It's looking bad. On. It's but, looking bad. You know, Washington. Yeah, Washington, I think, is ahead of the Sabres. Mm-hmm. I mean, at this point, Montreal might be ahead of the Sabres. Dude, Montreal. At least they can fucking score. That's true. <laughs> I, I will say that Caulfield goal was pretty sick. Caulfield's disgusting. That he dude. Is. That dude reminds me of uh, Marty St. Louis, but with a better uh, shot. Oh, yeah. I mean, Marty St. Louis is the perfect coach for him. Oh, yeah. Perfect. I, I don't think there could be any better coach for, uh, for, for Cole Caulfield than, you know, another legendary smaller player in the league. <laughs>